Three, two, one. You're on Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. In the hot seat. Rock and roll. Legends coming in here. Let's see. Let's test this out. There you go. Let's check this out if this all works. Hey, can you hear me? time we have kingdom come coming on here they got a new drummer new singer i want to know what's going on you want to know what's going on you're big fans of the band let's get him back here nobody okay, ever called here so uh, and no, never, no problem no ne never it could be a life or death situation so well we don't i don't want yeah. that to happen today right now i want no, to good I, i've been in, i mean i'm very excited i you know i was a drug counselor for many years and uh you know uh i was james's uh sponsor you know, and uh, so I feel really bad that, you know, maybe I was a little bit responsible for his death. But then I found out that his the real reason he died is because he, he was he was the only one in the band that was. And he had a heart. He had heart problems right after the vaccination. So. So so d don't get me crazy right now. So are you are you saying that the might have um, killed James? Is that what you, you're saying? I'm sure of it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. My, really? Um, I mean, my wife had a heart attack. My best friend had four strokes right after the second vaccine. He's completely blind. One of the best guitar players in the world, Jim Ryan. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of people are injured, but you won't hear it on the news. But I, I don't want to get political and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Robert Kennedy. I mean, he's he's uh, you know, he's you know, and what's weird is because I worked in recovery with autistic teenagers in Malibu. And uh, they were all, and that's what Robert Kennedy's saying that, uh, you know, we didn't have autism until we started, you know, given 24 vaccines before the first, <laughs> you know, before they're turned two years old. So, um, yeah, and, uh, and you know, Biden won't give him uh, one secret service person, you know, even after two members of his family were assassinated, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's, things are pretty messed up. It's you know. Do you think Richard Lewis, you think he was, that's what caused his heart? Uh, I don't know who that is, Richard Lewis. Richard Lewis, the comedian who just passed away. Oh, okay. Well, there's one every day, you know, and especially, I mean, you know, a lot of those people thought that, you know, like James told the whole band, look, we're doing Europe. Uh, we're doing Europe in six months and uh, they won't let us cross the borders without a vaccine passport. So. Uh, and I was like, well, I'm not taking one. I, I know better. This is part of the Marxist agenda that, uh, you know, and and they'll divide us in people who took the, who didn't took the, and, you know, the smartest people in the world didn't take the, it's no offense, but the PhDs are the most, uh, you know, the ones with the masters and PhDs, they were the least, they were the most hesitant people in the world, you know. And uh, and then I'm just, you know, I've been a conspiracy theorist since I was, you know, 10 years old, since I had to get under my desk in school because we were going to get nuked, you know, and then they killed John Kennedy. And that was obviously the CIA who did that. And we still haven't, you know, they still haven't released any of the details on it. They haven't released, you know, there was, you know, all these commissions, 9-11 commissions, you know, they're all just, you know, it's like it's like someone. Someone screws you over, and it's like you want to have them arrested, but but they're the they're the big authority. You know? So what do you for, for, so for the people who are that don't want to it again that did it because you know we're all afraid we don't know we want we yeah. don't know what's going exactly. on we're trying to believe in what we're told because we believe what's right is right. So a guy like what a guy like me who sometimes feels a little pinch in his chest, or maybe one of my viewers like my my. My queen of Adikaville, the new queen of Adikaville, Tatara, who yeah, watches yeah. the show, people like her. Well, I'm you know, you, you, what do we do? What do we do? Here, uh, well, use your knuckles and give yourself a little uh, sternum massage like really? that. And, you know, a lot of it, that's, you can break up a lot of like the, the smaller vessels and stuff. Of course, you know, in this country, we don't, we don't, you know, until you need a, a vessel this big in your heart and, and it's like we ignore all the micro circulation in our body you know that's probably all messed up i mean if the big arteries are getting clogged what are the little ones doing you know stay away so, from cheese right yeah i don't know uh i don't eat cheese but you know 
That's why you're um, so skinny and look good. See me, I I'm, I'm, I like bagels and lox, cream cheese. I'm nuts, you know. Yeah, yeah. I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten sugar in three years now. Yeah, and I, so, I don't eat bread. Well, you know, my big, my every Sunday I used to allow myself dessert now my yeah. dessert is potato with like a half a stick of butter on it well that and, butter there, there you go let me ask you so yeah. james james was playing with you guys right before his passing right he was still in kingdom come correct was yeah we we had uh blas elias as a substitute yeah uh when james couldn't make it because he was you know pretty sick and uh you know it, you know he was an alcoholic and he was in a rehab when he died Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was pretty much, I mean, we tried to do this in 2015 with when Lenny was still in the band. Right. Okay. And, uh, and so, you know, James had like a year off from Scorpion. So he said, let's do some kingdom come. And, and like Lenny was into it, we were, you know, we we're getting that big, those big bucks cause it was all original members and we hadn't done anything in, you know, 30 years, 29 years yeah. or something. So we we're, there was a big buzz about us. And then, uh, James went to his doctor that afternoon, the afternoon we were going to rehearse that night with Lenny and Rick and Danny and everybody. And uh, he's, he told his doctor, I'm an alcoholic. And his doctor says, well, let me prescribe you some Valium, right? So he thought, okay, uh, I'll, I'll just take a Valium before rehearsal and then I won't need to drink. And then when the Valium started kicking in, he thought, you know, it'd go good with this, some Jack Daniels, you know. Mm. I mean, he, he felt that buzz coming on. And he was like, I got to finish this off. You know, an hour later, he actually fell off his drum stool. And Lenny said, that's it. I'm going back to Germany, you know. And uh, we made a deal with him like a year and a half later to uh, to lease the name. And, you know, Universal Pictures bought the, bought the catalog and stuff like that. So it's kind of open now. And this is... Uh, this now, what I, I believe, you know, uh, Matt, you know, Blas Elias, great drummer, uh, uh, Keith St. John, great singer, you know, real pro. And uh, but we weren't we weren't getting the gigs we wanted. And uh, and, um, you know, Keith's pretty busy with the, the Robin, the rock vault. And uh, James was kind of sick. You know, he uh, you know, he, he like most alcoholics, he wouldn't talk about his alcoholism. He would just deny that he was and eat a bunch of mints and, you know, so nothing was, worse. Than, was he, was he still drinking till the, till he, till the he end? was, he was like, uh, you know, a closet drinker, you know, yeah. and he would, you know, I was his sponsor and, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm a professional drug counselor. Yeah. You know, I, I worked in that. I was the highest paid drug counselor in Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, I did a frequency healing session for people you know, that would, uh, you know, uh, bring on the divine frequencies and, and, and then get people to uh, relax and other things they weren't capable of doing uh, so quickly off drugs. You know, yeah. they just got off drugs. So it's hard yeah. for them. Hey, there's Danny Stagg. Danny Stagg hey. is here. I figured I'd make this. The right. best way to get people to relax, JB, is to scream relax at them. Yeah, that works Danny, that works. Danny good, good to see you, man. Thank you for being here and members only club guys from kingdom come here we're talking about the band you know we remember we're talking about james right now because james actually was on the show here but james was a great guy and we had a fun time talking he sure was character you know oh, he was people a that people that asked for his autograph and he'd sign their forehead you know with a magic <laughs> marker and then you know like four days later the guy put it on facebook look james kotex signed my head <laughs> great guy great guy but, yeah. great drummer great musician Guy oh my God. Natural. Natural. total natural i mean what people didn't realize about him too i mean when he died he was 61 but uh i met him when he was about 19 or 20 i think yeah and he was a great singer you know he he could sing and play from behind the drums as good as anybody in the world you know and he was a background singer he kind of lost his voice because he never got any sleep or he slept too much or drank too much i don't know what you know just gets a little yeah. crazy but so he didn't you know, uh, yeah he didn't have the uh, uh he didn't have the voice he used to but he he was like you know he did a lot of the background vocals for kingdom come he was always right on the pitch you know and uh you know and never missed a beat you know so yeah he had said great things about you guys what's that danny he used to do a train whistle sound and and two notes would come out of it <laughs> 
throat at the same time. I've never heard anything like it. Do yeah. You guys, uh, do you guys uh, recall your last conversations with James? I do, and it it, it, it haunts me constantly because I was we were screaming at each other, and you know, it's sad that that was my last conversation with him because I was his sponsor. And I was supposed to be helping him, but I was like, I was, I was applying what we call tough love, love, you know, he was, he was lying to me. He was lying to me. And I was just like, James, I'm not going to listen to that shit. I'm not co-signing your bullshit. You know, you're an alcoholic. Get back in, do another 31 days in rehab. You know, you're not ready for the world yet. I can tell by talking to you. Let's do another 31 days and then we'll get you back on drums and everything will be fine, you know? And 10 days later, he died. Wow. So, yeah. And, and it was a very strange time. I mean, it was Christmas. His birthday is the day after Christmas. My father in law committed suicide the day after Christmas on James's birthday. And I was, uh, you know, and then James died a few days later. And uh, I was I was asked to sing. I do a lot of funerals. And that's kind of typical of being a member of AA. And uh, it was like one of the first things I ever did. JB, can you sing at this guy's funeral? His name's his name's James. And he, his favorite song was Rockabye Sweet Baby James by James Taylor. Can you sing that? I said, I sure can. And then I did Amazing Grace. So I just did my father's law in law's funeral. And then I could have went to James's, but it was like too far away from where we were up there. And so I just felt really bad. But I'm I'm in close contact with his brother, Lee. And, uh, you know, all his fan pages are yeah. very supportive of our new show and our new drummer. And, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, one of the last things that I said, we're going to use Matt Muckle, who's one of my best friends and one of the greatest drummers and greatest human beings on this planet. And, and you know, uh, one of the last things James ever said to me is, Matt Muckle's a motherfucker. That guy can play drums, you know? And I was like, yep. And uh, so now we got him, you know, and uh, we got a new singer and we're really psyched about these two shows. We're going to wear all black and we're going to ask everybody in the audience to wear black because this is a funeral for us. You know, I mean, we're going to have a good time and we're going to play our best songs and we're going to play some surprise songs. Uh, James, James really wanted us to cover this one song, but we had trouble like getting all in the same city at the same time to rehearse it and do any recording. But he uh, we're doing a song that he I'm not going to give away the song because it's going to be a surprise. And once we start rehearsing it, maybe it'll suck and we won't we'll have to drop it. But he he was begging the Scorpions to do this song. Right. And redo it like in a heavier way, Scorpion style. And then they they were going to do it. And then at the last minute, they didn't put it on the album. They didn't like it the way it went. So James was trying to get us to do it. So as a tribute to him on this show, we are going to do that song and we're going to do it the way James wanted us to do it. You know, so that's cool. That's cool. He deserves that, you know, it's, exactly. He does. He deserves that, man. Uh, it's tough, man. I mean, um, when you see these people, you know, when they're, when they're having their downtime and they're above ground, yep. they don't get the recognition until they're underground. Unfortunately, nowadays, yeah. like, Janie, like Janie Lane, for example, I remember oh, doing God, cat yeah. club jams on Thursday nights. I used to play with Slim Jim and Janie would come and I'd see him at his worst. I'm like, what the hell? And I didn't understand Jamie's how great he was till I saw rock of age. Oh, yeah. And I saw well, a little it. insight. Janie Lane uh, is from my hometown, Kent, Ohio. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know him in Kent, but I, but I was in a golf foursome with him and Joey and Janie and Jerry and Johnny. And we all did this force golf foursome all the time. So I was really good friends with him. Uh, he's a, just like me. He's a cancer dragon. He was born in July on the year of the dragon, which this is the year of the dragon now. I'm and I, I July too. Yeah. Yeah. Are you all right, man? July 11. July 11. Uh, so, uh, as James would say, sorry about that. <laughs> but you know, it's tough. It's tough to be a water sign in this world. You know, my my father-in-law who just committed suicide was a Pisces, 
and you know my best friend Straga in hot in out in los angeles he you know he goes to jail if he's not on drugs you know if he's not on psychiatric drugs so it's tough being a pisces you know yeah. very emotional you know and uh janie was a highly emotional person and i think he drank to get rid of some of that empathy pain sometimes and then just like most rock stars you know like axel rose and all those people it's like okay I'm a drug addict. How do I stop doing drugs? You know, well, let's put you on this drug, you know, and then they gain weight and, you know, they can't stand the way they look anymore. Their hair falls out and it's like, you know, and then they've got to deal with all that pain, you know, just, you know, you know, as a drug counselor and an alcohol counselor for so many years, I, it, it, it pains me to see people go through that, you know, and then like Axel, he, he couldn't deal with the weight he gained. So he had plastic surgery and it really fucked him up. That was really bad and didn't, didn't hold probably because he was on some kind of drugs and stuff like that. And then, you know, it took him years to get back into some kind of groove and accept the way that he looked and, and felt, I mean, he's still the greatest singer that probably ever lived, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Can never and and people need, you know, as a, as a drug counselor, I would have said, you need to focus on that, man. You were given an, unbelievable gift from god you know focus on that don't worry about the way you look don't worry about the way you feel you're coming off drugs you're going to feel bad you know just allow that to happen allow yourself to feel bad accept that feeling and just you know time will 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 make it better yeah. sometimes it takes a long time you know but you know and then uh, you know some some musicians they're like they think that alcohol makes them play better. Maybe it does. I know a lot of times I got really drunk and I go, man, I can't believe I'm playing this drunk and it sounds this good. They you make know? them sound better to themselves. <laughs> yeah. We've and all been there. That, you know? We've all there's been there. There's definitely something to that. You know, we definitely all been there, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you, you got a, a new singer. What about um, Keep St. John? What was the reasoning uh, he left Kingdom Come? A lot of reasons. You want to take that, Danny? <laughs> well, actually, it, it was pretty much a question of like, we want to we want to do as many shows as possible. Yeah, and you know, I want to do a hundred shows this year. Yeah, you know, at least. Right. And, yeah. Um, you know, and South you know, America, Asia. Yeah, Keith had some other things going on, and he had that like residency um, rock vault thing that he was doing, and. Las Vegas where he lives and and um, and it, there was a, a lot of times when the schedule would conflict you know we'd get an offer to play somewhere and you know we'd have to go can Keith make it and and, and it, yeah it was it was that there was no animosity or anything or you know screaming matches or anything it was just like yeah. we're we want to play 100 150 times a year and and yeah well, you don't so you know good luck god yeah. bless you yeah. i think you know with kingdom come you know we we played big festivals most of like our first american show was opening for metallica and mm -hmm. doc and scorpions and van halen and you know we played this candlestick park for eighty five thousand people so we were you know pushed right into that stadium band kind of thing but i still love playing for 300 people in a in a theater that's got perfect sound you know because to me it's all about the music you know and that was another reason you know i really you know if we have to replace james we need a drummer that's like james you know like a bonham influence in his backbeat and stuff like that and that's matt muckle i mean matt muckle's just a drummer's drummer as james would put it yeah great you know? I, got, I got a chance to play with matt as soon as you play for, yeah. with him for the first time, you're like, "Oh my God, that feels great!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, Matt, 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 Muck's a great drummer, great guy, team player. Yeah. So I know him personally because I've jammed with him, and I know the way he is. And uh, yeah. he's a, not only is he great on drums, but he's great off stage too. He's easy to get along with. And that's, oh yeah, that's an actual really. human being. What a concept! <laughs> they don't exist, do they? Huh? These yeah. not many, you know. Now, was Keith ever a diva? Because all singers could be divas. Because uh, he's he's a well. That was one guy. of his selling points, you know. With the beginning, his selling point was that he has LSD, lead singer's disease. So he yeah, did have, <laughs> he did have that. Huh? 
And that's, yeah. that's kind of what you, you, want, you, know, you need. I mean, because everyone's looking at you, you know, whether yeah. you like it or not. They're not, they don't, the girls don't come to the, the show to see the drummer unless they they play drums. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 okay. Who's a bigger diva, Keith or Lenny? Oh, boy. Well, Lenny, I say, Lenny was a better singer. You know, no offense, Keith. I mean, Lenny was one of the greatest singers that ever walked this planet. Absolutely. And and Lenny was a Pisces. If we're, you know, talking about super emotional, you know, that guy would blink his eyes for like 10 seconds at a time. And if you know, like body language, he's he was trying to find down. some way to be comfortable, you know. Yeah. But when he sang, all his emotions came out, you know. I mean, it was like he couldn't express his emotions or, or how much he liked people. Uh, but when he sang, oh, my God. It was just like, turn on the tape recorder, you know, this guy's doing it, you know? Yeah. So Keith, Keith was more of a workhorse, you know, opera trained bel canto singer. You know, he, he could sing the 150 nights a year if, you, if, if need be, you know, he did his warm up routine. Lanny was more of a 50 night a year kind of singer, you know, and, and then we'd cancel a few shows on top of that. But, you know, I preferred Lenny as a singer but uh keith was a keith was a real pleasure to work with you know he you know i i remember going to the bathroom at a gas station once and i came out and he was doing qigong in the backyard of the gas station i go this is our singer awesome guy you know so uh but i'm real excited about ezekiel 2717 our new singer he's a badass motherfucker now, and now how, this did you guy find, how did you find him the new singer well, we auditioned uh, five or six singers. We were gonna, we were just looking for a substitute uh, because Keith was turning down a lot of gigs, and we couldn't afford that. We wanted to stay out there no matter how big the shows were. So we found this guy, and uh, we tried out five singers in Pittsburgh. They were all excellent. You know, one guy we kind of favored, and then I left and went back to Florida. And a few weeks later, Danny and and Matt ran into this guy and said, "Oh my God." This guy's Forgot amazing. About him. Yeah. So, uh, so we had him in and, uh, did a few songs with him and now he's, he's learned the whole set. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we got some surprises at this show we're going to do that are just going to kick ass. And I uh, knew in five minutes that he was, he was the guy yeah. that we could use. I mean, I, it, actually I knew in about, he sang about two lines and I was like, Whoa, hello become a member check out all our episodes unedited and don't forget to subscribe hit that bell to be notified and click on the box for our next episode right here until then we'll catch you all later who loves you baby we do